Hey guys, my name is Dr. Sam, and in this video I wanted to talk about the long-term side effects of TRT and delve into the benefits and risks of using exogenous testosterone. So recently a few of you have asked me to talk about TRT and how to boost testosterone levels naturally. There is so much research on this topic, so I thought I'd give you my overview and hopefully save you some time and wading through lots of information. I'll summarize the findings from the latest research studies on long-term use of TRT. Firstly, I wanted to clarify some definitions I'll be using in this video. So there is TRT, which stands for Testosterone Replacement Therapy, and this is prescribed by a medical doctor and given via a medical protocol. TRT can come as a gel, patches, injections, and as a capsule. And in a different category, you have anabolic androgenic steroids, which are usually bought on the black market and they are given in cycles. They can come as injections, patches, gels, or capsules, and are essentially testosterone derivatives. Often athletes use anabolic steroids to improve their performance, or regular people take it to improve their physical appearance and help to lose weight. Right. So lots to cover. Firstly, let's talk about the benefits. And you probably already know that testosterone levels decline with age. So to add insult to injury, testosterone levels are lower in the male population than they were nearly three decades ago. And TRT has been used in millions of men worldwide and has been proven to improve libido, improve erectile dysfunction, improve overall sexual function, increase energy, improve mood, increase bone mineral density, and decrease body fat, and increase lean body muscle mass. So what are the long-term risks or adverse effects from using TRT or anabolic steroids? Well, I'll start with TRT risks and move over into anabolic steroids, but obviously there is quite a bit of crossover. TRT is commonly prescribed to older men who are at risk of heart disease anyway. So the big question on everyone's lips, is there an increased risk of heart disease from taking TRT long term? Now, I have to tell you that the evidence is really conflicting and that we don't have an answer to the long term bit yet. Some studies that were funded by the pharmaceutical industry show there is no increased risk of cardiovascular events from taking TRT, while other big studies that weren't funded by the pharmaceutical industry say there is a detrimental effect. <laughs> And you have to keep in mind about who is funding these studies because it is very important when it comes to bias and outcomes. And in 2010, researchers stopped the testosterone in older men study when early results showed that men on TRT had noticeably more heart problems. However, this study has been criticized because many of the patients were sick with heart disease, obesity, and diabetes anyway. Bottom line, Despite all the studies on this, there is still not a clear answer. I think there is a definite fishy smell, but no fish has been found. My advice is to be cautious, especially if you have underlying heart disease. Again, have a really good chat with your doctor about it so that you can make a decision that is best for you. For many men that don't have heart problems, the benefits of having a good quality of life from TRT far outweigh these potential risks. Right. Following on from this, what is the risk of prostate cancer with using TRT long term? Well, firstly, I should say that this theory comes from several studies that showed that TRT increases blood levels of prostate specific antigen or PSA in some men. And this is used as a screening blood test to check to see if people have prostate cancer. We also know that using medications that block testosterone can successfully treat prostate cancer. Essentially, there's a concern that testosterone therapy could stimulate the growth of prostate cancer cells. And unfortunately, there has been no randomized controlled trial that have had enough patients in it to answer this question properly. Big surprise. It's a pretty controversial area and I would imagine that most doctors would feel quite nervous about prescribing TRT to men at risk of prostate cancer. 
in saying that it should be a decision that you make together with your doctor. Inconceivable. What about lower urinary tract symptoms? So when men get prostate enlargement, which is called benign prostatic hypertrophy, testosterone was thought to make this worse because it increases the size of the prostate further. Thankfully, research has shown that TRT doesn't worsen these symptoms and may actually help in some cases. Okay, now onto the long-term risks from anabolic steroids. And as I'm sure you know, <laughs> millions of people have used these at some time in their life. And in the short term, there are very few serious medical consequences. But over the long term, it's a different story. So what can happen? Again, studies have demonstrated that there are toxic effects on the cardiovascular system with long-term androgenic anabolic steroid use or abuse. However, one would have to argue that the same controversy exists with TRT and that there are many confounding factors in these studies. There are potentially long-term serious effects on the reproductive system from using anabolic steroids. Reversible changes are decreased sperm production, shrinking of the testicles, which makes lower testosterone levels, and irreversible changes include gynecomastia, so swelling and pain of the breast tissue, male pattern hair loss, and problems with fertility for both males and females. There is not a strong link between liver cancer and steroids, but there is a strong there is strong evidence that long-term use of anabolic steroids can cause liver damage. I think one of the most important questions is how does long-term use of anabolic steroids affect the mood and behavior? Well, there is definitely more anxiety, depression, irritability, and insomnia. Also, when withdrawing from steroids, it's a very difficult process and often people use other drugs, like they start heroin, to try to counteract these symptoms, which obviously add to the problem even more. I'll link some of the other long-term effects in the description. I learned a long time ago that worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Write that down. Dr. Sam, what can people do to boost testosterone levels naturally? Well, as you know, I'm a doctor, but I believe in trying to avoid medications if at all possible. So what are the five ways to boost your testosterone levels? Well, number one is losing weight. And I know it's really easy to say this, but it is absolutely true. Losing weight will boost testosterone levels in men who are overweight. Number two, exercise and lifting weights. Now this is probably even more important than losing weight as by itself, it really helps increase testosterone levels. Number three, vitamin D. Some evidence has shown that supplementing with vitamin D can increase testosterone levels. Please check out my other video on the benefits of vitamin D for more information. Number four is getting enough sleep and reducing your stress. Try to get at least seven hours of sleep each night and reduce repetitive stressful situations in your life so that your cortisol or stress hormone levels don't swing wildly. <laughs> Number five is avoid estrogen-like compounds, specifically alcohol and soy products. And these aren't your friends when it comes to boosting testosterone levels. Please give this video a like if you found it helpful and hit the subscribe button for new videos every single week and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos on Tuesdays. Please let me know in the comments what you enjoyed about this video or what you want to learn more about. And I've just started posting on BitChute and Library. If you prefer to watch me on different platforms, please go and take a look. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video.